Well, 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 we meet again. And you're right on time, because it's time for another reaction video. Oi, pessoal, tudo bem? Eu sou o Felipe, e hoje nós vamos reagir a um artista incrível. So, the reason I was speaking Portuguese is that we're going to be reacting to an amazing artist today that I have a special kind of connection with, if you will. He's an artist from Brazil, from Sao Paulo, where I lived as well for eight years. I'm half Brazilian as well, so I feel like kind of related to this guy in, in, in a weird way. But without further ado, we're going to be reacting to Mike Azevedo. So Mike Avocado is an artist that worked on multiple big projects and is currently right now an art director for Mardot Studio, which is a digital art outsourcing studio uh, that, is, that is founded by himself, and which is pretty cool. You can check it out. And um, But without further ado, right now we're just going to be taking a look at his art station page so let's do it so if we take a look at his older works right here we have a epic dragon of massive proportions but also epic in his crazy control in controlling multiple lighting sources okay what he's doing right now is adding three three light sources at once. So we have like the main light source that's coming kind of in front of the dragon, you know, sort of. Hitting the shoulder, the face, this like cool light. It's like cool bluish light. And then we have the other light source that's coming more of like of its environment, like the lava. That color, that warm color of the lava is gonna hit his chest a little bit. That's what you're gonna see here. And then in the back, in the background, like this holy, another warm light is coming, hitting him from the back. And then we have all these three different light sources coming from different angles, making this piece look absolutely epic. And I don't like that word, but for this piece, I have no choice. Mike, you don't, you don't leave me any choice. I have to use this word, epic. It is epic. <laughs> We also have on his wing subsurface scattering beca because his wings are kind of uh, translucent. That's what you're seeing here as well. Also the amount of things going on in the whole piece, like all these rocks and debris and also the background is kind of detailed as well. But also at the same time, making sure our main focal point still is important and that our eye doesn't deviate from what is important. You have to control the viewer's eye pretty well in order to not like make it seem chaotic or over the top or too much to look at. And he does it extremely well. Here we have a lot, another amazing freaking dragon. Here we have like the main light source is like this cool lighting. Then we have the bounce light that's coming from the, the bottom. So whatever light is hitting the floor, it's gonna bounce on his underneath his tail, like underneath his shoulder right here. He saturates the bounce light a little bit just to make sure you, you can really see the bounce light. And that's like a stylistic creative choice that I love a lot because these saturated colors are gonna make the piece overall really vibrant and alive. That's what I love to see as well. And then because we have a lot of cool lighting, what's a genius thing to do at this point? What, is, what does the genius, Mike Avocado do right now at this point. Okay, we have a lot of cool lighting. We make the really warm background that contrasts the silhouette of our dragon. But also the really warm light that's coming from the back is gonna tra travel and hit a little bit of that tail here. You know, you can see that. And it's a little bit desaturated compared and, and less uh, intense compared to the background color because the farther the light has to travel, the more it diminishes. So the light on his tail right here is not gonna be as intense as the background, right? So we have all these beautiful harmonies of colors and lighting dancing with each other, but we're never, we were never losing the main focus of the silhouette. The design is crystal clear, everything is readable, and our focus is always on what's important, our main focal point, the dragon. So the values, 
are amazing. And also, once again, really love that stylization of this dragon. It gives us a lot of character. This dragon almost has like a personality to it. I love also the pose that is like crushing his prey, like holding it in his hand, like, ha, gotcha, bitch. Gotcha, bitch. So let's go to the next one. We got another dragon. And I'm showing a lot of, dra he has different pieces, okay? So I want to make sure you know that he has other other subject matter as well. But I love dragons and he does it so well. And this is such a good narrative illustration. What's so different about this one is the composition. So in terms of composition, you can do a lot of with lighting to navigate the viewer to what you want to look at. So the rest of this dragon's body is in complete shadow, right? You can still see it, but it's in, pretty much in shadow. There's a light source coming like from the top or from the back hitting this dragon's face. So because this dragon's face is pretty much illuminated, that's the first thing you're gonna look at, right? There's like these light rays illuminating the path where this horseman, horse knight is walking through. So what you're gonna look at is this dragon's face this, and this horse knight. But like there's a beautiful piece of storytelling just by, you know, navigating the viewer's eye with just lighting. And then whatever is in shadow is more desaturated and whatever is hit by light is more saturated. As you can see, like this is really beautiful greens, green leaves that has been hit by the light. It's very saturated and everything in the dark is kind of desaturated. And then there you have this beautiful balance between the colors, beautiful balance in colors and lighting. If everything would be saturated, then it's kind of uh, jarring, right? It's like, ah, oh, my eyes. <sighs> you don't want that. And he knows that. So let's go to the next one. Now this is a dragon from League of Legends. <sighs> I just want a moment of silence to really appreciate the beauty of this piece. Guys, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. This piece is so beautiful. The perspective, the pose, the foreshortening, and the elements going into perspective, the colors, the beautiful, beautifully saturated colors. There's a lot of good things going on in the background. The whole, this whole world that you can see underneath this dragon. And it's beautifully rendered as well. Elements pushed in front and even going outside of the frame, like to make things appear more, like even bigger. You can really almost feel the painting, if you know what I'm saying. And again, the stylization is something that is uniquely... The stylization is something that is uniquely Mike Avocado. There's something about his style that you look at it and it's instantly, you recognize it. I, I feel like that's the one of the coolest things about his art as well. So I wanna show this piece because I think it's really important. I think it's really cool because it shows it shows something. It shows something very important about this artist. This piece is called Joan Ujiganti, which translates to Joe the Giant in English. You can truly see that he understands the basics. And when you see artists roughly sketch things out, like sketch an art piece in its most rudimentary state, and that looks already su super good, you can see that this guy really understands his fundamentals and just needs a few brush strokes to just make it look insanely good. You can see like this very rough brush strokes. You can see these brush strokes, you know, but once zoomed out, it looks perfect already. And that's because he doesn't need to go into detail to make it look good. He understands, he understands the basics already. And so like already in the rudimentary state, it looks already good. And I would say that's something all artists should strive to achieve because then it really shows that you understand your material. For the longest time, I thought when it comes to colors and lighting, I just have to keep in mind warm lighting means cool shadows and cool lighting means warm shadows. That's it, simple enough. I was wrong, man, because you know, the, the rule should be direct light, skylight, atmospheric light, bounce light, you know, and that's exactly what he's showing right here. Let's zoom in again. With the direct light from the sun, which gives that warm light on top of this giant, you can see like these warm colors. And then we have the skylight, which is really blue. You can also see it in the distance. And you can see like some blues like in the middle here. 
like some blue colors here in, this, in the shadow of its face. And then you have the bounce light coming from the grass. Like the grass is really saturated, really green. And then the light that's hitting the grass is gonna bounce underneath like his belly you can see here. You can see the greens on his leg. When you look at the cows, like the same thing. That's just one part of making art look good. There's a lot more that goes into this that makes it look good than just this uh, understanding of lighting. But understanding this means that you just you don't have to do much or go into much detail to make it to make art look good, as you can see right here. And that's why I think it's important. We also have here uh, some Brazilian folklore subject matter, something he does a lot as well. What I think is cool about that is that is is that. This really separates yourself from other artists because you're doing something isn't really common and it's something like uniquely yours and something something uniquely you do and it's something uniquely relatable to you as a person as well. You're doing something that separates you from all other artists and that's something I would encourage everyone to like do so something that separates you from other artists instead of doing the same thing. Now I don't think it's wrong to learn from other artists to be inspired by other artists. I just feel like do something that separates you from other artists because that's gonna make you unique. And being unique as, an, as a good artist is also extremely valuable. This is the look of a man who looks like, yeah, I've got an armadillo on my back. You got a problem with that motherfucker? I want to show this piece because once again, I love his stylization and the way he stylized is like something uniquely, it's something you can directly recognize as his style. He knows how to exaggerate certain characteristics, exaggerate certain poses, facial expression, to make that really charming stylized art style. And I love it. I'm completely in love with this piece because it has everything we talked about like summarized in one big impressive artwork i think it's cool showing his uh, thumbnails it's an important process when you're creating like sp splash art like these and you want to show it to your client that you're working with these are the conceptual phase like before you're gonna before you start rendering your whole fucking piece, you know, you want to make sure the, the client you're working with is, is happy with the basic like thumbnail first before you start putting all hours, like maybe he doesn't like the way he looks or the, the pose or whatever. And then you have to do the whole piece again. No, that's why there are thumbnails. Like you're going to make like thumbnail sketches showing just the values and the composition and the pose of the character, just to make sure to communicate with your, your client, the person you're working with, that everything is all right, is everything which one they like most. And then you can go to the step where you just start rendering, and making something look fucking good. Yeah, this is my face saying, give me your skills, Mike Avocado. Give me your skills. <laughs> Guys, if you're interested in uh, Mike Azevedo's art, I'm going to put a link down below. You can check it yourself for more work. You can also uh, check his website out, mar.studio. It's really cool. Um, yeah, that's going to be it, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. Eu te vejo a próxima vez. See ya.